everybody, it's Holly here today for our Newton's Nook, and today we're going to be introducing the brand new stencils to the Newton Nooks line, part of the four year anniversary and July release. We've got Tropical Leaves, Wave Stencil, Starfield Stencil, and the Paw Print Stencil. And I'm going to go ahead and show you some different techniques you can do with the stencils. And be sure to stay tuned during the week as we release each stamp set for a preview of what I did with some of these backgrounds on my cards. So we're going to start out using the uh, tropical leaves stencil and we're going to do some dry embossing with that with our big chop machine. I like to cut the top off of my packaging of my stamps and my stencils so I can slide them in and out easier. I don't like to mess with that plastic or the tape on the bottom of the plastic bag so I just like to do it this way. So you're going to start with the cutting plate and you're going to lay down your stencil and then I'm going to lay down your cardstock. And then you're going to use the silicone rubber piece from Sizzix and you're going to lay that over top. And then you're going to use the hard impressions plate or impressions pad. Then you're going to set your cutting plate onto level one and then you're just going to run it through your big shot and that's how you emboss using your stencil. It's a pretty simple technique. It, like I said, it'll work with any stencil. Um, it's going to be a different sandwich depending on which machine you have so just check your manufacturer's instructions but it leaves this great detailed impression on the cardstock. Okay, my next technique, we're going to be using some Nouveau uh, Glitter Paste. Basically, this is how most people would use their stencils, um, one of the common ways to use your stencils. So I'm going to attach a piece of cardstock down to my mat using some washi tape. Then I'm going to attach my stencil over it with a piece of tape as well. This just helps keep it in place so it doesn't shift as much. So you can use any type of embossing paste, but I'm going to use the Glimmer Paste from Nouveau. And you're going to just use any type of little uh, spreader tool you have and I'm just going to take a little bit out and I'm only going to use two ways of the stencil so I'm just going to put it down and spread it over. Now you can make this thick or thin depending on what your preference is. Um, I'm using a very thin coat so I'm just going to run it across and I'm going to make sure to take my and scrape the tool across to get a nice even layer. You could also dab the tool over it to get like kind of thicker and thinner areas if you want. It's totally up to you how you want to do this. You would do the same exact way with your using embossing paste. You're just spreading it out. And you want to make sure you clean your stencil and your little tool off immediately after using this stuff. Um, it dries very hard and it doesn't always come off. So you just set that piece aside, let it dry, and then you continue making your card with it. So very easy, very simple. Um, it does leave a little bit of residue on your stencil if you use the glimmer paste. It doesn't always come off, but it doesn't affect the stencil or anything. Okay, so the next technique is kind of a emboss resist, but we're not actually going to be embossing. So I'm using some distressed uh, paint in white picket fence, and you can use any type of acrylic paint to do this with. It doesn't have to be distressed. So I'm just going to dab the paint up off my mat with a ink blender, and then I'm going to lay my stencil over the piece of paper, and I'm using Bristol cardstock for all of these techniques. And then you're just going to rub your paint into the stenciled areas with the ink blender or dab. I'm just kind of dabbing it, running it over it. You really want to make sure you work it in good, add some extra paint if you need it. You don't want to take the dauber directly to the stencil because with the paint being a little bit more liquid, the paint can ooze underneath the stencil. So that's why I'm using the ink blender tool for this technique. So you're just going to dab that on and you can use any acrylic paint for this, any color. And then you want to go ahead and make sure you heat set that in between your layers. And then you want to make sure you clean your stencil again. Um, I can't stress that enough. Make sure you clean everything in between. It'll dry on there, it'll stay, and then if you use the water again, you could get a messy, muddy, so you just wanna make sure you clean. I'm just using a baby wipe, or you can run under some water. And then once you have your area nice and clean, I'm gonna go ahead and work with some Distressed Ink Minis for the rest of this technique. So I went ahead and heat set that paint, so you can't really see anything because it's white. So I'm gonna take a couple colors of Distress Ink, and I'm gonna go ahead and run those across. And as you can see, the image that we use with the stencil is kind of popping up from underneath. And as you blend over it, that white is going to kind of pick up some of the distress color. So like some of the paw prints are going to look yellow, some are going to look pink, some are going to look blue. And you just keep blending and this will work with any colors. It'll work with distress stains, any type of ink that you have on hand. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spritz it with some water. And then when you spritz it with water and you pick it up, or you could use your heat gun. Some of the areas where you put the water on, the paw prints are going, the ink's going to come off the paw prints, so they're going to look whiter because that's the color of the paint that we use. 
So you can leave some of them white or you can leave some of them with that light coating of the Distress Ink. It's kind of your preference of what you want to do there. Then you can go back in and add some more ink. You could add some more splatters of water. Totally up to you. But this is a fun way to do an emboss resist technique with just using some acrylic paint, the stencil, and your Distress Inks. So I'm going to go ahead and show you another technique now. Now this is where you would just basically use your stencil in a plain, simple, in non-fancy way. You just put the stencil down, get some ink on a blender tool, and you just use your blender tool and you just run it over the stencil. This is kind of a basic stencils one-on-one -on -one way to use, just add some uh, images to your background, basically. Two-parter, so I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. I'm using Stress Oxide inks, but you can use any ink or even watercolor down on your mat. And so I'm putting the inks down, I'm spritzing them with water, then I'm taking my stencil and I'm laying it down over the ink, and then I'm picking the stencil up, and now I'm gonna kinda clean my little area here underneath real quick, so I can put my paper down. Then I'm gonna lay my paper down on the table, and then I'm gonna flip my stencil over so the ink is underneath. And this is kind of like a reversed effect of the stencil. Now this leaves a really light faded um, paw prints in the background. It's more of a loose look. It's not too composed. It's more of a loose look if you want to go with like that. And I kind of mix colors that mudded a little bit, so you might want to use different colors when you do this technique. But it's pretty simple. You're just adding, you're picking it up like a smooshing technique with your stencil. Off again because I don't want to have any transfer, but you'll see I didn't clean it very well. So I'm going to flip that piece of cardstock over. And then I'm taking Salty Ocean Distress Oxide Ink and smooshing it directly onto the stencil this time and spritzing it with the water and then kind of making sure it kind of blends together so you don't have the fine lines of the shape of the ink pad. And then you're going to take that and flip it down onto your stencil. So with this one, we covered the back of the stencil with the ink directly so we got more coverage um, of the stencil with the ink than to stick it down into the smushed ink that was on the pad or on the mat. So I'm using one color, just the Salty Ocean and lifting it up. And then when I heat set that, you'll see we have more defined paw prints in this one as it's not as loose as the other one, the other technique I just showed as well. So these are just some random techniques you can really use with your stencil. Stencils are a great thing to have in your stash. I mean, there's so many different techniques with them. You can even layer with your stencils, layering different patterns, but these are just some fun little techniques you can do with them. So you can see I have a little bit of green in there. That's because I didn't get the stencil perfectly clean. So that's why I'm saying it's really important to clean in between your stencils. <laughs> and I actually kind of like the way the Salty Ocean one looks. It's kind of a fun little pattern. Now we're gonna go back to the Wave stencil and we're gonna do some watercoloring with it. Now you can use watercolors or pens, whatever you've got. I'm just using the Strex Oxide ink pad because it's on my desk. So I'm wetting my paintbrush and then I'm picking up some of the color and I'm just going over my stencil. You wanna make sure your paintbrush isn't super wet with ink because it will slide underneath the stencil design. And then you're not gonna really get a definition of the stencil because it's all smushed underneath there. So you just paint over the stencil very lightly. Just keep going over. You can use the whole stencil or as I'm using just a couple waves. And then you dab a little bit of excess off. You lift it up, heat set it with your heat tool or let it air dry. And then you've got kind of a nice loose defined um, wave look by using the watercolor. And the watercolor technique will work with any stencil as well. Okay, for my next one, or my final technique I'm gonna show you, we're gonna be using this star, uh, Starfield stencil. So I'm gonna create a galaxy background. Now, I've done this a million times in lots of videos and everybody knows how to do it. So I'm gonna speed this up here um, as I do it. I'm just doing a quick galaxy background. This is nothing fancy just using a couple different colors of Distress Ink on a piece of Bristol cardstock, blending them in. I'm using uh, pink raspberry, mustard seed, peacock feathers, faded jeans, and black soot. And I'm just going around and adding them. Once I have all those where I want them, I'm gonna go ahead and use my spritzer bottle and I'm gonna unscrew it and tap the straw to leave some splatters. And then I'm gonna dab those off.
Okay, so another way you can add the splatters is you can lay your stencil over your background and then you can take your spritzer bottle and you can spritz over the stencil and that's gonna put your splatters just in the area where the opening is in the stencil and then you can go ahead and dab it. But again, you wanna lay a fine mist of water because if it's a lot of water, it's gonna seep underneath it and make it very large. As you can see here, I showed that if I squirted it halfway, it leaves you large droplets. So then now that that's dry, we're gonna go ahead and layer the stencil over it again. Now I'm using some gesso paint, and you can use any type of paint you want here. And I'm just putting in some on my mat, and I'm using my finger, you can use a sponge. And I'm just dabbing the paint in the stencil in a couple random spots of where I want it to go. I'm not covering the stencil completely. Um, you could if you wanted to. And I'm just dabbing one layer with the paint, and then I let, then I go back and add some more paint, because we all know with the stress ink, the color's gonna come up through the paint, whatever it is you add, and it's not gonna be perfectly stark white. So I'm kind of building the layer a little bit with this, what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, clean my stencil off, and then I'm gonna go ahead and heat set that with my heat tool for just a second. And then once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and add my stencil over it again. And this time I'm gonna, when I lay my stencil down, I'm gonna match it up right over those stars that I did with the white gesso. So I'm laying that right over the stars and matching it up. And then I'm gonna use some more glimmer paste. This time I'm gonna use the clear glimmer paste that just has some glitter in it. And I'm going to cover the entire stencil. And what that's going to do is add some clear glitter stars to the open spots of the stencil. And then it's gonna add glitter over the white areas that I already did with the gesso. And this actually comes out looking very cool. So you'll have to make sure you stay tuned when we introduce one of the stamp sets that I use with the set later on in the week to see what the full card looked like. This is a really kind of a fun way to jazz up your galaxy background. So here I'm just adding that clear glimmer paste all over the background. This would look really pretty with the glimmer paste that's a navy blue color, I don't know the name off the top of my head, that's got some silver glitter in it too. That would look cool for a galaxy background. So you're just gonna add this all over and then you wanna make sure you dry it when you're done and clean up your mess. And then here you can kinda of see, I'll give you a close up of what it looks like. It has lots of glitter to it. So make sure you stay tuned for the finished products during the rest of the week. Thanks for watching.